Alright, today on today's episode of the Happy Satellite Nerd, I'd like to show you some of my old analog C-band satellite receivers and the scramblers and dish mover. They don't really have much use today, but years ago they were what you needed to receive us uh, to receive a satellite signal. We'll start with the um, the receiver. This is an MACOM satellite receiver. This is model IDU H1. Uh, and from what I get, what I understand about this receiver, it is a C band only. It does not do KU band. And when I, I did hook it up to my satellite dish once before, I couldn't get anything with it. I wanted to see if I can still get maybe C-SPAN, which was, at the time, it was still broadcasting in analog, but I don't know if it's broadcasting anymore. It has your channel up buttons. It does come with a remote. Uh, and the remote has the features like to, you can drive the dish east or west. It, uh, you can select the audio program between 1, 2, and 3. It's kind of weird how it has the channel uh, layout here. It has Each button has like channel 1, 2, channel 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and etc. So, and it has these, this PS set reset. I don't know what that is. And the power button. It does power up, but... And uh, it also has um, a skew adjustment for little knobs under the bottom here for adjusting the skew. Now, I don't exactly know what these buttons did here video scan and well I understand the polarity which the interesting thing with these boxes that the newer boxes uh, don't have is they had polarity control there is a product out there called the titanium uh, it's made by the company titanium which does do this uh, it's not a receiver but it's a dish mover and it also change, uh, controls the polarity but the modern receivers don't have that so this would be able to, so that you can adjust that and I'll show you the old LMB because it's kind of interesting that the old LMBs had motors built into the LMBs where the modern day LMBs just don't have that. It's just mainly a circuit for um, switching the polarity. So if you want the polarity to be vertical, um, it just it's just a circuit that will switch it uh, to uh, uh, either vertical or if you want the polarity to be horizontal, it'll just switch it to being horizontal. And then there's different audio tuning uh, sections on this and there is and then there's your audio selector so when I turn this on it it, it basically looked like a you know an old TV, TV set dial with nothing on it it was it was static it was a dark static -y, uh, signal is what I saw on this when I when I fired it up I did try to loop it out so that I can just use the with a modern free air receiver just to see if I can get anything but um, and another thing is where there, where there was analog channels, it was kind of uh, far on my arc where there was some trees and I, even with the digital stuff I had some trouble receiving stuff so I couldn't really get anything. So moving right up, I have an MACOM Video Cipher Dis uh, Series 2000 EB Disc Scrambler. Something that you, we needed back in the day so that we could... Uh, I remember I had cable and we had the, the uh, you know, your cable tuner and then we had to run it through the scrambler which made the picture quality kind of degraded the picture quality so we're even back in those days we we're paying big money for cable but yet only uh, not uh, getting kind of a subpar picture and this uh, last thing on top here is the dish mover and it just simply you move it to go move it east it goes eat uh, move it this way to go west to go that way and it has a little indicator to indicate where the satellite is parked at now for the MA box so this is where your satellite connection would have connected. Kind of very similar to what a modern day receiver would be. And then it'll put to your TV or you can use your uh, your video output there and uh, your audio outputs would be there. I'm not sure what the accessory output would be. Possibly for an output to loop to the... Um, to the scrambler, so the uh, 
that might uh, I, I don't remember exactly I remember of cable how it worked was the uh, with the cable box would output uh, through the the scrambler and then the scr and scrambler would output to the TV with a port like that I don't exa exactly know how the satellite end worked I didn't have a, uh, a C-band satellite back in the analog days so there's a few uh, little uh, level switches that are that you can turn with a little screwdriver to uh, adjust your satellite receiver. And I like to point this part out here, which I believe, what is this? The dipole motor. Okay. See, I, I was under the understanding that this receiver had um, an actual mover, uh, like what this thing would do uh, to move the dish. But I, uh, and some receivers did have that. But I think this is, the, it's a, because it says the dipole Polarizer, polarizer motor. I, I'm assuming that's for the the dipole antenna inside of the LMB to move it, adjust it. Dipole. I don't know if that's the sensor for the motor or I exactly. I don't know exactly how that would work, but uh, because when I look at the original wiring for the old C band satellite dish, there's a lot of extra wiring coming through. There's wires for the uh, for the dipole um, skew. Uh, switcher which most modern receivers and satellites you don't have to worry about this it doesn't have it everything's going to travel through one coax cable where you don't have to worry about with the older setups you had um you had multiple sets of wires going through it and uh that's why i like to say this the the equipment today has been such a made, made things so much easier uh, and then these things have some big old fuses inside them that uh help protect it against uh, any kind of shocks, lightning, lightning hitting your satellite dish. So I'm just going to move my attention up to the scrambler um, as it has, it do, nothing's really marked on this scrambler, like it doesn't have, um, you know, into TV, to TV or anything like that. So that's kind of interesting. If maybe somebody in the comments can explain this to me, how it was set up. I'm just showing what the equipment was. I actually never set up this stuff back in the old, the olden days. And I have no idea what all these um, RCA outputs are, whether they're video or how they go. All I have indicated here is whoever owned it before had marked down a little two, three, four, five, and that's all that, uh, that's all that I know of what the Discrambler has. Now, it, ha it has a spot for a card, and has this little box. This part, this part of the Discrambler can come out. And it has a little phone jack uh, thing there so people can uh, connect it to their telephone. Maybe that was for pay-per-view or something like that. Now this thing I actually did use for a while. When I first got the dish, the actuator was still working. It was in a little bit rough shape, but it was it was working. So I, I remember I hooked it up uh, with this and I just ran it through the wire. Just put, it, put a twist tie and with a little bit of electrical tape protected it. And I connected up the read sensor and I was able to move my dish for a while until the actuator um, just got to the point where it wasn't moving a anymore. And so I, when I first got that, uh, my, my Black Beauty uh, satellite dish, the actuator was working for me for maybe about a year and then I needed to get a new one. So I ended up just parking the dish at probably, it was probably 101 West or 97. Nine, or 99 West where there was a bunch of channels and I just kind of left it there um, where at least I had the dish parked on a satellite with the channels that I tended, tended to watch the most. And just to compare how things were built in the 80s or I think this was built in the 80s um, how uh, things have changed with the digital receiver. This is the digital receiver. You know the remote is you know it's a little bit bigger than the remote. It does, you know, this is my Amico mini box. It's a very solid receiver. Um, but just the ports, like it does have the, uh, the, the, the LMB port for your LMB and it uh, has your AV port, but it's like a, the headphone jack thing. It has your HDMI, your ethernet, USB, and then this has a USB port right there as well. But yeah, these things are so much smaller today than uh, than this thing. This thing is heavy. <laughs> it's built well. It's heavy. Um, and these were expensive. Like um, I don't remember how expensive they were, but they were probably over five hundred dollars. And sometimes they were like a thousand. You know, some receivers were like a thousand dollars, depending on how early your 
you were into satellite where something like this uh, you can get these on sale um, for like um, maybe a hundred and maybe a hundred and fifty between a hundred and hundred fifty dollars you can get like your you know an, an HD free to air receiver that will get C band and um, KU band I don't know if I mentioned that earlier this one, I don't believe it does do KU band. I think it, this one is strictly just a C band receiver. There was receivers that did C band, KU band, and there was even analog receivers that did digital. So you can get all the digital channels um, back in the uh, early 2000s when they started bringing in the digital channels. And a lot of people, they didn't bother. They were expensive back in the early 2000s. I think there were hundreds of dollars for a and a receiver that could do MPEG-2 and do analog and a lot of people just didn't want to spend the money and they just abandoned their um, C-band dishes and they sit there, uh, some of them are just sitting there to this day not being given any love or getting any receiver use out of it. So kind of my goal here to those people if they're stumbling across this video is um, to maybe uh, uh, to, to be able to Put those dishes back to work and to uh, get some good use out of them because uh, they're not uh, you might need a new receiver as i said something like this would cost uh i'll put a link to a to a website uh websites where you can look uh, look online to to buy some of this stuff but yeah you can in the comments so look in the comments for a site maybe where you can find to buy some stuff like this but this would probably only cost uh the, the to buy the the new stuff today probably would only cost you um, for a receiver and a C-band dish mover probably be a couple hundred dollars. Where back in the 80s, this would all be like a thousand dollars. All this would be like a thousand dollars. Another so the LMB that came with the uh, satellite dish. This is the side. Of it. it was a pretty big LMB. It's falling apart. <laughs> it's like chips of it falling apart here. The scalar ring, I should have kept the scalar ring and tried, I think this one's a little bit bigger than the one I ended up using. That's actually this pretty close in size because this is my CKU uh, band LMB. This is uh, DMS International is the manufacturer of this one. I've talked about it in uh, previous episodes before. Um, oh yeah, the, oh yeah, the cup fell off there. It just has a little cup. But anyway, so this, yeah, this was the LMB. It's one of the feed horns. So like this whole part here is a feed horn that uh, goes to here, which is the actual LMB is this thing here, which I think, so, okay. So this thing here is the uh, polar, the dipole polar, polarization motor thing. So it had wires that you had to connect it to that uh, would, um, either adjust the polarization so even you, you can sit and t fine tune your signal with this is from what I understand and most LMBs don't have this anymore you don't have to run an extra wire for that which is which makes things a lot easier usually it'll just automatically switch it to vertical and horizontal you just have to set your LMB up the right way when you're aiming your dish yeah. wow. made in Canada you do not you don't see that anymore that's kind of cool <laughs> to see that. <laughs> Being a Canadian, you like, you know, you like, I like seeing, st you know, it's kind of cool seeing this stuff that's been in. Gensat Communications Corporation BDC 1.2 block down converter and made in Canada. So, uh, one time they made uh, uh, C band LMBs in Canada. That's cool. Not anymore, I don't think. Uh, so, yeah, this is the LMB. It's heavy, very well built. It's uh, stayed good. This part here actually is made in Japan. That's what it says right there. Right. Yeah. And uh, so I think the, the idea of this is the LMB screws on to the feed horn right here. And I don't know exactly how to adjust this or get this working. Uh, oh yeah, and then it has like this, uh, it almost looks like this other connector here that almost looks like a BNC connector. I don't even know if I get it off. Oh yeah. Looks like a BNC connector. I don't know if it's gonna fall off on me or whatever. Which uh, kind of converts it to, 
It's a screw on connector. Amateur radio operators would know what all these fittings and connectors are. So it converts that to your cable output. I, I gotta keep this, and, and, and the thing is, I thought the LMB would not work after uh, not being, like when I bought the dish secondhand off Kijiji, I did not think the LMB would work. Um, so, uh, secondhand, I thought it was all, oh, it's, you know, it's an old LMB, it probably wouldn't work. But when I first set up the dish and I tried aiming it, it worked. Uh, I think it only, because there was no motor hooked up to it, it just defaultly went to the vertical transponder so it because the modern receivers have like a switch built into it to switch it I can only get the vertical channels on c-band so I can get, and then when I hooked up what ended up being uh, connecting uh, this LMB this uh, CKU band LMB everything hooked up. so much lighter this one <laughs> this one this one I can't I can work hard and get you know get like Arnold Schwarzenegger arms back in the 70s oh my droid has uh has a message for me. Um, yeah, so so yeah, this one, uh, point out, there might be people looking at this, well, why does it have two outputs? Uh, I believe the KU band, oh yeah, it's all screwed on here too. The KU band is, this is the KU band part of the LMB, this is the C band part of the LMB. So the C band is this port. I might, well, I might be wrong on that, I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, this C band is here, and the KU band is here. And i actually seen someone take a, um, on one of the uh, Facebook forums that I uh, post these videos on, somebody uh, showed how they drilled in just a regular KU band that you would, LMB that you would stick on a smaller dish. He drilled it onto one of these and made it work. And then that was, that's pretty cool. Like a lot of people can do some pretty cool stuff with it, with this, with this equipment. Yeah, it's a little dirty, the bugs and stuff pooping on it. <laughs> it's probably bug poop uh, that, uh, that's on this LMB. Uh, because I did have it up uh, for a couple of years and then I just tried out my titanium C1 and uh, Yeah, and I just cut these cords really short just and then ran it to a 20 well, I had it through running to a disc Q switch, but if I I'm gonna probably play around with this again, and I'll just run these to a 22 K switch which and I'll still run a, a dis a, a dissect switch because I have some other KU band dishes that I like to just go to, but for uh, when I'm using this again, I'll just use the 22K switch to switch between KU band and C band, and I think some of these LMBs have that built into it. And the last thing, oh, this is heavy, ah, is the actuator. These things are heavy. Ooh. Has like one of those grease nipple things, like because I had a grease gun. I tried to grease it up to get some more life out of it. Um, so yeah, I think it's an extra life out of it. That's for sure. And one trick I discovered with my dish is when it didn't have enough stroke to like reach one of the either more because uh, uh, I had it aimed on the on the right side, so it st stuck out to push. Um, east to push the dish east so one thing I found is just loosen this up and move it and if I just need that just that little bit extra um, place to, to put it I can just stick it there and this one I didn't even bother when I got it I never even bothered rewiring it because I uh, didn't do that to take it apart because I knew the electricity part of it for the power uh, were red and uh, white so it made it easy enough to um, I didn't have to take the thing apart to do it so I just used these wires and then just taped it all up and hooked it up to the for this one I did you it wouldn't work on uh, this, the old satellite dish mover so I used that V box that I did a video on so yeah that's the actuator sometimes that will be the thing that you'll have to replace and you'll have to get a new actuator or or a uh, new dish mover. So those are sometimes you need to get the newer versions of those. I have seen on YouTube where people have taken an actuator and hooked it up to a 12 volt battery, just the power part, and gotten it to move. And I guess you could move your. And I've read on the forums, but I haven't tried it myself. But you can just hook it up to a 12 volt battery and move your dish that way uh, if you have it. Which is kind of good because if you just have a satellite where you uh, where you want it, and maybe you can, if you, even if you were to have still an old LMB where you needed to change your um, 
uh, vertical to horizontal, maybe you can power it up that way. Thank <laughs> you.